Hello, welcome. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Mark. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. How was your holiday? It's good, restful. Uh, kinda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our building got flooded out, so I oh, worked from home until probably the beginning of the semester. Oh wow. Yeah, which is frustrating because there is so much I have to do to get the facility up and running. Right, right. Mm. Oh man. Well, we'll get started here in about, I don't know, five minutes or so. Um, as usual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how was your break so far? Mine was about the same, like similar. Like it was very nice, but I was also like painting and, and putting a new backsplash in my kitchen and <laughs> doing all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah. I was kind of you know, not finished, but yeah. Uh, Unpacking more of the stuff that we've moved to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be a long process. Yeah. <laughs> it gets to be like when you need something, you're like, oh, okay, I know where that is. I might know where that is. And then I'm back in as you need it, right? Yeah. So welcome. I know I sent out a, a really late announcement. I wasn't sure I was I was going to have this meeting this week, um, but Caitlin talked me into it. And <laughs> oh, Caitlin, so you're the one who's responsible for this. Yeah. She's on top Sorry. Of <laughs> Sorry. No, I think it's a good thing. Get things kicked off. Yeah. It's a new year. Cool. And so yeah, as usual, for those who just joined, we'll be getting started in about four minutes. <clears throat> well, welcome, Miguel. Nice to have you here. Hi, Michael. Hey, Judy. Nice to see you. Hi, Aaron. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, you didn't respond to my email. Are we marching down the cut afterwards? <laughs> I was going to respond with some emojis and thought, mm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, I love January 6th. Why not? Let's do yeah. it. <laughs> we'll get started here in about two minutes or so. Hey, Judy, did you see the email from um, Tyree? Yes. Okay. Good for her. Yeah. But you'll need to send me some others. Uh, we have we, we have about 10 people still available. I think. Okay, cool. I, I'm getting back into the resumes um, today and Monday. So. Okay. If they've applied, I would definitely be reaching out. Yeah, I have... Should I send another nag email to folks to apply? Yeah, you can let them know. Like this position is still open. We're act we'll be actively looking at resumes. So if you haven't applied yet, feel free to do so. Okay, I will. I will do ex exactly that. Thanks. So. Hmm. Oh, 
Okay, well, let's get started. Uh, looks like we have a decent show of folks. So welcome everyone uh, to the first tourist community meeting of the year. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, I almost wasn't gonna have this meeting, but thought I'd, uh, like I was, I was saying earlier, Caitlin talked me into it because we do have some things we could discuss, um, mainly, uh what these tourist community meetings are going to bring for the next year um and some things that we're going to do differently and i'll give a quick update on course migration as well so this is the tentative schedule i did put it on um on the web page uh for those of you who ever um go to this and uh we have some ideas we were thinking that this year, instead of doing um, the usual requirements gathering that we've been doing for the last, I don't know, it might even be two years now that I've been running these, um, we're going to have some guest speakers to showcase some of the work that they're doing. Um, but th this will be in um, in the vein of uh, people showcasing some tools or activities or things that they've done in their courses in the past uh, that we'll want to replicate or and improve on in Taurus. So things that have been done in legacy that people um, liked, uh, that maybe created on their own or with the help of others uh, that extend the the usual capabilities of OLI. Um, we we want to replicate all of that in Taurus. And so we'll have some folks showcase some of those things um, and have more of a discussion about, okay, this is great, but what would you also like to see as we rebuild the same capability in Taurus? So on February 3rd, uh, Sebastian will be here to show off um, an annotation tool that he created with Everly um, to uh, do some highlighting and annotation in, in the content. And so that'll be the first one, but we plan to have more of those. Um, throughout the year that I just don't have uh, the schedules for. So if you have things um, that you've done in OLI courses that you've built uh, that you want to showcase, that you want to replicate in Taurus or have uh, an extension of those tools in Taurus, we would love to see them. So please reach out to me and I'll get you on the schedule. But we'll also be reaching out to people uh, as well that we know have these things. We're probably going to also use this meeting to do some user testing, uh, to really showcase some um, pointed functionality that we've built in Taurus and how folks actually uh, take the time to maybe just use it in the meeting, do a walkthrough um, and, and collect some feedback right, right in the meeting itself. It won't be really formal user testing experience, but like a way for us to just gather some um, thoughts and uh, feelings about Taurus as it's being built. And then, of course, we're going to also continue talking about some uh, and showing some capabilities that are getting developed in Taurus throughout the year. So, um, you know, the advanced authoring and adaptive activities that has been in place for a while, but we haven't really um, showcased it yet because we've been exploring with it and playing with it. Um, we'll be ready to do that this year uh, and maybe get people. Uh, starting to use that. And then uh, some other uh, topics that I know will be of interest to folks like certificate generation um, and, uh, you know, student experience, getting some more uh, conversations around that so that we can improve those things in Taurus. So again, this is just a tentative schedule right now. Always uh, keep looking for this uh, community link for changes, but I also will continue to send out um, the emails like I have been letting you know what the topic is for each meeting. Uh, any questions or ideas around that? All right. Yeah, did I hear someone chime on? Well, me, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about uh, quizzes. Do you have online quizzes and do we have uh, the chance to import and export them to uh, other, uh, to other uh, classrooms? So can you repeat that? I missed the first part of that. Okay, uh, quizzes. Quizzes, quizzes. Yeah. Can, oh. Tor can, can Toros import and export uh, the questions? 
we don't have that ability yet, but if you're interested in that, I'd love to talk to you more about that and see what we can do, like what kind of format your uh, existing yeah. posts are in, okay. that sort of thing. Okay. okay. I will definitely reach out. Uh, if you want to put your, um, either send me an email directly. Let's see. Okay. Or, Thank uh, you. yeah, I'd love to reach out and talk to you more about that for sure. Thank you. Yeah. I know the idea, this is something that's come up often. Um, and now that we have this idea of an activity bank, um, this has come up as well as in uh, talking through, I don't know how many of you are familiar with learner sourcing. Uh, we've been doing a lot of experiments as part of grants and getting students to generate questions against content and then being able to use those back into the course. And so as part of that, we are trying to think through interfaces that would allow that importing of um, questions into an activity bank. So uh, yeah, definitely want to talk more about that. Uh, and anything else that's on folks' minds that they really want to make sure that we touch on this year at some point? I'm going to write this down here. Um, I know you've said this before, it's just timeline. Um what's going to be produced where and I, I've forgotten where that is. So maybe even having a, a link on the, the page would be the the meeting page would be great for people like me who can't remember things. So on the tourist community page, um, there is a link out to let's see, let's see the roadmap as it was. Um, and I know it's a lot of jargon because it's written, it's it's the direct roadmap as it was in, um, as it was produced by the development team. Uh, but this will be being updated uh, really shortly. We are in the process right now of looking at um, all of the projects that we have and grant obligations and really trying to prioritize and lay them out across the year of when things will be developed. Um, and we're doing the same for uh, course migration as well. So this is, I think, out of date at the moment, or it only went through the end of, um, I thought it went to the end of 2022, but I guess it didn't. But I will, uh, when we have an updated roadmap, I will replace the link on the community page to it. I'm gonna make sure I capture that assessments. Anything else on folks' minds that they would make sure we want to address this year? Might want me to check the chat too. Oh, thank you, Nicole. Just gonna put it right in here so I don't lose it. Okay. Well, I can turn to uh, migration, which is probably another thing that's top of folks' minds. Um, I don't have anything to show with regard to migration. I mean, we have a lot of documentation and we have, um, I wouldn't say a full roadmap, but I can tell you that we have imported um, chemistry into our development environment, which is called Tokamak. And we've been reviewing that uh, page by page to make sure that everything imported correctly. And right now we're about 50% through that review um, and finding minor things. Um, so the next steps for that are to, um, you know, make sure that we build, uh, we, we augment the tools that we're using to do the migration to include those things that might have been missed or done, you know, came over and they import a little funky um, and then do a re-import to see if that fixed everything and if we're still seeing the same problems. Then the next step is to then reproduce that same uh, set of steps on Proton. Proton is our um, public facing delivery environment and authoring. Uh, it's not the development environment and testing, it's for actual production and uh, and see if that all goes smoothly as well. But at the same time, uh, we have been testing and building functionality and capabilities in Taurus to accommodate um, 
what I'll say is like the next wave of courses that we're going to tackle, uh, those being um, languages right now. And then we have some other little courses that we're also trying um, to make sure we have the capabilities to import, such as some of the metals courses, the metals online courses, um, like discrete math primer. Um, and there's a there's a bunch in the list right now that we're kind of trying and, and reviewing still. So we're not just focused on chemistry, but that's that's our huge test um, because it has a lot of the capabilities of our courses um, need as well. And so the same with the languages courses, they have a lot of different functionality um, that have been uh, produced in the XML. And now we're replicating that in Taurus as well. And so far, all of those are importing, and I'll be meeting with um, Natalie, who uh, is the lead um, on uh, the language course development. So I'll be meeting with her next week when she's back in the office to coordinate the prioritization of those language courses and the process we'll use for reviewing and all of that going forward. Um, as part of that, we'll be establishing kind of a good set of steps that we could take anyone through. Um, so, uh, that's something. And as far as, um, the, the question in chat, thanks. How can you get more involved? Well, um, <laughs> as you can imagine, this is no small feat. Uh, one of the things that I, that's on the top of my mind is finding, um, reviewers. Basically we need, uh, reviewers both, um, to look for just like errors or, you know, uh, making sure that things look the same as the original course, but also subject matter expert reviewers who can ensure that some of the things um, that they might only catch uh, are also caught. Uh, so, you know, just really um, inspecting these courses thoroughly. So um, if I can, uh, if, if I can, if you're interested, I would love to, to start a list of folks who uh, might be interested in doing that. And thanks, Lauren. I know um, Student Cognition Toolbox is up there on the list because it's like a smaller course and it's used uh, so much. So I think we've, um, that has been on the list to, as uh, the, the, one of the samples, like we have a, like a sampling of courses that we're trying at different times to make sure that they're that they ingest properly as we add new functionality and that's been on the list and i think it's been imported um successfully in tokamak but we haven't started any kind of review yet of that so yeah i will definitely be reaching out uh to individual groups and folks to um as part of this migration effort but if you also are just interested in helping to review any course uh i'll definitely take anyone who's interested in doing that so yeah, thanks if you are. Um, let's see, any other, any questions about migration? I'm sure there are a lot of questions about migration until I can show a, a really clear schedule. Um, oh, another thing I wanted to ask before I stop and ask a question and see if you guys have questions is, um, the other thing that we're doing is we're doing quarterly releases to Proton. So, um, you know, as we build functionality, test it in tokamak and then quarterly we'll be pushing those um, updates to taurus because as you can imagine um, every time we update taurus there's a huge testing component that goes with that um, and leading up to that release as well and so quarterly is about all we can handle right now with our small team um, to you know stage those um, those pushes to production test them and get them out the door. And so we're doing that on a quarterly basis. So the next one, uh, there was just one done in late December. In fact, on December 20th, we did an update to Taurus. So if you haven't been in, in Taurus prior to that date, you might wanna go in and check some new stuff out. Um, and uh, the next one will be, uh, is scheduled for March. I don't have the exact date yet, but it's in the March timeframe. So what that means for migration, is and again in a in a I'll be reaching out to folks and scheduling this out with folks. But um, what that means is if we migrate your course today, uh, we'll be we'll migrate it into Tokamak, start to perform the reviews and testing, 
And if it's, I mean, no matter how fast we get the testing done, um, like if you get it done in a month, then you still will have to wait until um, March for it to be released and usable with students. So just so you know that that those quarterly releases are when um, no matter all the migrated courses up to that point will then be available. And then the same thing will happen subsequently, you know, so then we'll be migrating courses that then won't be available for students until like June um, would probably be the next the next um, release to Proton. Did that make sense to everybody? <laughs> I'm trying to see if I if I uh, actually explain that. Okay. Yeah, Aaron. Yes. Um, based on projections of the timeline, are we talking fall for possible regular use of Taurus at a student level? I would say that that's a fair statement. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so because, you know, even if we migrate, there's a lot of language courses and we'll probably be spending a lot of the, the first half of the year trying to migrate those and coordinating the the reviews. Um, and that's going to take some time. OK, thanks. Sure. Any other questions specifically about migration or anything, actually? This is kind of a layway meeting. I just wanted to get folks together and and give them a little, give you all a little bit of information about what's going to be coming this year. Um, so I can imagine this, you know, this won't go the whole hour, um, but I'm happy to talk about anything that's on your minds with regard to tourists and migration. Any specific questions that you guys have about just the whole effort that I can either, if I can't answer now, can get the answers for you? So what's the process if we start moving over the Taurus and we run into issues? Um, like if we run into showstop or something we can't work around, what happens? Do we just go back to Echo or is there a process to expedite some of the issues we're we're finding? And I, I know it may matter on on how big it is, but um just wanna know what the process is, what to expect. Yeah, the process is um uh even going on right now, where as we find things or if we have folks working and even using tourists and have been for a while now. We have our KTH partners are delivering um courses through their uh, as well as some on-campus uh, new programs, um, and as well as I think Gotham's been working in Taurus for a while on on e-learning design. So the shows the way this works, and 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 Gotham, this is good for you to know as well. As you encounter things, um, there's a couple ways you can um, there's a couple ways that you can get issues resolved. One is to um, uh, we have a, uh, a link out to the GitHub repository where you can just put in, in fact, let me just show you how that is because that's, it's, it's kind of important. Um, when you, sorry, there's a message in here. Yeah. Um, okay, if you go to the GitHub, there's this, and it's open um, and public, uh, and you can go to issues, and you can submit a new issue right by clicking this. I don't know why I'm, you don't need to. You don't yeah. need to sign up. I don't know why that's not working for me right now. But it is public, and you can anyone can submit an issue um, or a ticket. And the way then that works is every other week um, we have a meeting between learning engineers, help desk and the development team. And we go through the latest issues that have been um, added to the GitHub and we prioritize them. And we um, and then Darren uses that to plan some sequence sprints. So, so we do so, have a process in place. Yeah. And if you have something that is really pressing, um, definitely reach out to me and let me know that you've submitted that issue because then I can advocate for it in those triage meetings. Okay, so it, it still sounds like it's a couple of months process at least to uh, 
I would say, I mean, depending on what it is and how showstopper it is, mm. we can get things resolved within a week or two. Um, okay. We have ways of doing that. Yeah. Okay. That that's good to know. Um, right. Hey, we have this problem with certificates. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> certificate functionality as well as um money collection is yeah. still in the works um but we know those are high priorities uh for delivery in fact i'll probably be advocating for those to get in place um before the next proton release so that then you guys could start maybe uh doing some stuff right away that'd be great mm -hmm. Um, Aaron, do you expect um, that every course that gets moved over to Taurus would need to go through this, you know, kind of really rigorous QA process or at some point, you know, all of the kinks are worked out? I'm thinking of, um, you know, the second semester uh, chemistry course and are we going to have to go through this whole process with that as well? So the development team um, is really optimistic and thinks that, you know, as we go through this process with more and more courses, that less page by page review will be needed. Um, and, and I believe that. I believe that they will work out a lot of the issues and kinks with every course that goes through this process. But I'm also... Uh, overly realistic. <laughs> I don't want to say pessimistic, but for me, I, I don't know if it was my course, I would want to review it page by page and make sure that nothing funky is happening before it gets out to students. Um, and that can be done in a lightweight way. Uh, we have student workers that can help with that process and just go through and like it just high level review. Um, you know, it's going to be up to each individual author, I think, to tell me what level of comfort they have with the review process. Uh, for chemistry one, it was really rigorous process because it's the first course. It has a lot in it. And um, again, like I said before, we're still finding things. So, um, you know, when you're going from XML, especially the courses that were built in XML, um, you know, as as course developers, I know I did some funky things in AMP that that you know are unique to AMP, and so um, you know those I think we want to be more careful with. Erin, we do this process like every single time that we edit at all in a course, and then you know we do the QA and we take it to production. We do a very like exhaustive editing process, right? And um, I. I, I just want to advocate for that. I, I agree with that. Like you would want the time to be able to go through each page. Um, that I think that makes a lot of sense. It's not that we've ever found problems in terms of the movement of the course, like through Q and A and through production, but we always check for those. Like what, you know, what if something happened and a graph isn't showing up properly? Mm -hmm. So we've never run into that issue. But I also understand that when things migrate to Taurus, they may look different. You know, they may not look as expected. So I think that's an invaluable thing to do, I guess. Is what I'm asking. Yeah, I mean, I think, again, your your course is a lot smaller, I think, to Sandy's point. I mean, that course is, is one of our largest, most intricate courses uh, that we have, um, along with a lot of different functionality with regarding formulas and branching questions and things that aren't used in other courses so we've really wanted to, that's one of the reasons we selected chemistry as the first course because we knew it had a, a lot of functionality that might be funky um but that does ensure that like i said other courses that we we put through this process um most likely we would have caught everything uh that was possible but then certain courses might want a more rigorous review but yeah i mean I'm, lauren i can imagine even just you reviewing and editing um you know semester by semester you, you find things that you missed um previously so you know these are big courses that a lot not that a lot can go wrong but a lot um to Lawrence's point might look a little different and it might make you even reevaluate how you how you um built something to begin with uh I don't think we've encountered a lot of that uh Sandy I don't know if you've encountered any of that where you've found that you needed to like redesign because of the way Taurus handles something? Um, um, 
by and large, um, the development team has worked with me to, um, you know, on their end to re redesign um, because, yeah, there were a number of things just in terms of formatting and the way things looked on the page that, um, yeah, just didn't look right. But um, anyway, the development team uh, worked worked with me on it. Yeah, so they, they yeah, they and they're very um, accessible and we all want to help make sure that your courses um, look good when they get out there. So, uh, but thanks Sandy for that. Um, that's reassuring that there hasn't been a lot of things that require, or it sounds like nothing's required redesign on your end. You've had, you've worked with the development team to kind of make it a similar look and feel or, or whatever formatting needs to change um, instead of you having to redesign, which is great and encouraging. And we'll do that with every, you know, author that we're working with to migrate their courses. And also remember, we haven't had a huge UX uh, design um, work done on Taurus. Uh, I can probably tell you that uh, as part of our Gates uh, grant that we're working with, where we're creating an exemplar, um, we're creating an exemplar chemistry course in partnership with ASU. Uh, for a, a Gates grant and uh, Gates hired a team called Substantial or a company called Substantial that has been doing wireframes and user testing and coming up with the look and feel for um, the elements that we're developing for that, um, for that grant, but that will also um, set the UX tone for the rest of the platform. So we do have, um, some really solid designs and CSS and, and um, changes to come uh, based on the work that they've done. But we still have an open position for a UX designer to help coordinate um, that across all of the, um, the platform. Another thing is uh, like the, the learning engineering team, the learning engineers at OLI, we've been working to um, you know, give feedback on things like you know, consistent terminology and vocabulary across the platform and, uh, and just anything else we see um, that could improve it, you know, little by little um, until we have a, a UX designer in place. And we do have someone that we've been working with um, who we share with the medals program, who's been great. Um, uh, and she's starting to do some UX work as well. So she's been working on right now, um, like our front door, like when you log in, um, that experience, and she's going to be wrapping that up. And then we're going to be discussing what her next like project will be. Um, I'm going to advocate for it to be like the help help desk experience um, and making sure that we can collect feedback across uh, the platform and courses uh, for either technical help or um, even just giving feedback in general on courses. So we're, we're small, but we're mighty, you know, and we get a lot of um, folks to help us out. So I'm really appreciative of all that. Hi, Aaron. Uh, what's the status of, of uh, well, you know, of CTAT uh, relative to this or, or other embedded activities? Yeah, so good question. So um, Raphael uh, designed what we call a, what we're calling a custom activity shim. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's basically something that can um, uh, be used for a lot of different custom activities across uh, all of our courses. And I believe, I'm almost certain uh, that it can run the CTAT tutors that exist in our courses. Um, how do I learn about it? Um, well, I will take your name and reach out to you um, because I know that with the chemistry, there was still some funkiness about it and, and Raphael's mm -hmm. been out. So we need to um, pick his brain a little bit about it and see um, what's going on with it before we fully roll it out. Okay, thanks. Sure. But yeah, by the way, we did um, 
we did do a test run of statistics. And I think that's when we found that issue uh, that we got to get Raphael on. Um, I'm trying to think if there was what the other sticking point with um, statistics was, but you guys might be interested since we're all friendly here. I can um, show you. Hold on, give me a second. What are how we're tracking some things and what what's in the works at the moment in terms of migration. So let me get to the right. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Let me get to the right window here. Are you seeing the spreadsheet migration log? Am I on the yes. right screen? Okay. Uh, so I can see crop stats. What are the notes in that in particular? Yeah, I think they've just came across not all of them, but there was some funkiness with a few of the CTAT tutors that we brought over. So this is how we're tracking right now uh, the sample courses that we're um, that we're running, and you can see there's quite a few steps to migration, um, and uh, some of them pass and some of them don't. If it's staged, it means it's it's gotten through and it's ready to be completely ingested into tokamak, um, but we're still really chipping away at chemistry and. Um, well starts a small course it's in review right now. Um, physics we're trying out and then we have this smattering of um, language courses. We tried some bios and uh, C at CM, interest stats and discrete math primer. And note when there's a reason why it failed and, and then Darren looks into these. Yeah, uh, the stats might use the old uh, super activity mm. interface. Um, so that 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 um, we we kind of like just stick with the newer embedded activity anyway. Uh, but um, I haven't done any work on stats lately that would make it uh, make it work in there. Okay, good to know. Um, yes. Yeah, um, uh, it's, if you don't have an answer to this question, it's not meant to put in anything on the spot. I just wanted to okay. find out. Um, is there a digital accessibility review? Uh, so, uh, good question. Um, Sasha and I are going to start that uh, next week. We're going to at least go and start to walk walk through the platform and fill in the, the, the latest VPAT information. Um, that's going to be our starting point. And then I can imagine as we find things or don't know if something's accessible enough, We'll probably be um, going back and forth with the dev team, and then I'm going to be reaching out to the digital accessibility office to see if they can offer any kind of guidance or help. I talked with the digital accessibility office. No, I talked with the accessibility office um, last year, and or it was the year before. It might have been. It was before we had a digital accessibility specific person, um, and we talked with them about even trying to find you know, have some pool of user testing for accessibility specifically, right. um, because, you know, we can test for accessibility, but if you don't really have to use the tools to learn, it's it's hard for me to judge whether it's, it's I can say it's accessible or not as a checkbox, but I don't know if it's actually helpful for the learning process. And that's more of what we're interested in finding out. Yeah. Okay. I was just wondering, because, you know, you had your protocol listed there and it was yeah, brought it yeah. to mind. Yeah, we're definitely, I want to pay uh, very close attention to accessibility, not only uh, just the platform accessibility, but content accessibility, and mm -hmm. really helping um, authors understand how important those aspects are as well. Yeah, cool. Great. Thanks, Thanks for the question. I'm glad I had kind of an answer. <laughs> it would have been okay if you didn't, because we I know, but yeah, we it's a lot it offline and we maybe, maybe we could we anyway. Should. Yeah, we yeah. should anyway. Um, cause I, I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to be getting myself into as we start to walk through the VPAT. Um, yeah. we've, you know, of course looked at a variety of tools and we have some, but they wouldn't do the trick in OLI necessarily, but maybe there are some, we should have a conversation about what all you need yeah. to evaluate and see if there's any tools to help with that. 
yeah, we know about Wave, and uh, I, I think Sasha's been playing around with that. Um, but uh, well, yeah. we have a license for Otter AI, which could do transcripts. I don't know how you're doing transcripts. Um, That's good to know. I didn't know that. Yeah, and you know, another tool that we're preparing to license in a very small way uh, is Ally for Canvas, but that likely won't help Ally. But we can. We should talk. Um, yeah. Definitely, and see what we can we can coordinate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Great. Cool. Happy to hear that. What does Ally do, Judy? It evaluates the Canvas pages and the content within that you're posting within Canvas, and ah. gives you a report on its accessibility, and and where you can change it, you know, and advice and the whole bit. One thing that's really tricky for accessibility, of course, is the specific disciplinary vocabulary so like in a science course we're looking there's also tools out for that that are out there for that that um we're connecting about they're they're kind of not like in your face tools <laughs> so I, there's a tool that's available i can't remember the name of it um that we're i'm working with the digital accessibility office to their primary on it to look into um just to see uh, if there's some more advancement, we can make in automating that as well. So these tools will be available campus wide then? It depends. It really depends on the licensing and how mm -hmm. costly they are. But certainly we want to like be able to make all of our content digitally accessible. So we need to be moving in that direction, right? Or have a central location, something, <laughs> something that supports that activity. Uh, whether it be the licensing of tools or yeah processes or and or education like all those combined right yeah uh, but Are the you... digital accessibility office Kimberly there yeah. is really great and she is uh, really on top of things so um, we've just been working with her closely on things we're providing through Canvas and uh, other assets that we're trying to build so uh, but these tools can be very expensive so <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway I think there's tools and processes we can potentially discuss <clears throat> discuss and leverage and see um, what we can collectively bring to bear. Yeah, that would be excellent. Yeah. And I, I do a uh, second Otter AI. We use it here for do it when we do our course creation for creating transcripts and it is amazingly good. I mean, you still have to do some minor edits, but yeah. it identifies speakers and the punctuation. It's just, it's just I'm amazed at how good it is. What and is that tool called again? Otter.ai. Okay. And the educate, I mean, I think we, I have one license under my name that we, we share. Uh, and it's, you know, it's 50, well, like $50 a year. We license it, Michael. So um, I don't know how many licenses. How do you license it for the university? We have a limited set of licenses, but they are not maxed out. And we do prioritize um, the office of, um, accessibility resources yeah. needs um but if, you know if you have Aaron, it, send, send an email it, to everly it, assist and you okay can i mean it's it's so cheap it's like i think we're paying 50 dollars a year for the one license that we use okay so. yeah but it's ferpa compliant under central oh great so centrally licensed because it's gone through contracts. So mm. I don't know if yours is, Michael, like just because it's out there. <laughs> Why would it be perfect compliance the same website? Uh, because it's the legal language and contractual language around that that huh. keeps the, the security and privacy uh, intact. Okay. We're only using it for transcribing uh, instructor lectures, not... Yeah, so that's up to the instructors then. And yeah. yeah. But for anything student based in a course related to for credit, you know, courses, anything we're offering at CMU that, that FERPA compliance needs. Okay. To. Fair enough. Yeah, cool. it's really helpful because um I know we rely on YouTube videos, uh, which and one of the reasons we yeah. do that is because they provide the transcripts, you know. But uh as we expand into other um video um providers uh it would be nice to be able to offer something uh to make sure that people stay compliant yeah i mean even um the same rules apply for FERPA compliance for youtube uh where we've finally 
I had it finally vetted through contracts where yeah. they were able to approve for compliance under the constraints of like students are not visually present mm -hmm. um, and their voices are not present. So it's really about the student's privacy uh, yeah. and getting sign off for that in order to be able to use it in these circumstances. Yeah, but, yeah. And uh, and whenever you run into those specificities, the university contract can help or I can I can connect with you and link uh, the, the around a conversation. So, yeah, I think most of the stuff that we do isn't doesn't involve students. It's more for. Right. And as you can imagine, the interactions that we have sometimes do. Yeah. yeah. I can and all of the things that they captured through Zoom. Yeah. There's students in the in the in the view right. potentially. So yeah. that's where it becomes sticky and their voices and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. When they're trying to repurpose those. Uh, yes. Right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, interesting stuff and and obviously can help lots of people, um, including and especially those who really need it. Miguel, what is that? Um, Collab Now? Yeah. Collab Now is, is a new platform for video conferencing and has plugins for LMS. Uh, it gives analytics. Uh, let's say we're, we're having a conversation with a student it will tell you if the student is understanding what you're saying or has to be improved uh, by uh, face reading. Face, face reading. Mm -hmm. That's, that's an analytics it, it um, throws. Uh, also for sales or something like that, it tells the salesman how to, how to uh, engage with the client because it's losing interest or it's getting interested. I'm sorry about my English. I'm I'm kind of rusty okay. on that, <laughs> but uh, Collab now is is it's a good tool and in and it's it's, it's like uh, being born about last year or something like that. All right, I'm gonna check it out. Thank you. Okay, okay. Sharing that. Glad to help. Always, yeah. I'm always up for good suggestions of new tools to try out. Okay, well, thanks for the questions about accessibility. Um, Judy, yeah, we're really trying to I think a couple of years ago, I wanted to be like, I want our courses to be the most accessible out there as possible. Um, so I actually will want to coordinate with you around maybe some training. If you have training materials too, um, that, that would be a cool thing to collaborate on. Oh, okay. Thanks, Miguel. I did. Make sure I copy that right in my notes. Okay, what else is on your mind? Anything else? These were all great questions. Thank you guys for coming and engaging like this. It's so helpful. Okay, well, I will be reaching out to folks individually as we are getting ready to um, work in our courses, uh, and migrate them, and getting functionality in place for you to deliver uh, to students. I'm really excited for this year. This is going to be the year where we really are, are going to see some um, uptick in Taurus use as we have um, spent the last year really replicating as much of the functionality as we could for our legacy courses. So very excited. Um, please come to uh, the next uh, the next meeting, which will be February third, and it'll be a demonstration of an annotation tool um, and more discussion around what are the needs around annotation. And um, and I know just to give you guys a little bit of a heads up, uh, Darren has produced um, a annotation tool. Uh, it's actually what he's calling a collaborative space. So it would be um, for annotation, it would be for discussions, and it can be done at the course level, at the page level, um, activity level. And I haven't even seen this yet, um, but I'll be playing around with it in the coming weeks, and we'll definitely be showcasing that in an upcoming meeting. Yeah, and that um, presentation, Aaron, will be Sebastian, me, and a couple members of my team uh, who worked on the project. and. Um, and we will be uh, connected with Norman around that to to figure out 
have that conversation around what we learned, you know, what we did in terms of both uh, the user experience and the technical aspects, um, and then how that relates to the roadmap. Great. So Norman, I believe we'll be picking up uh, uh, the conversation uh, after we get some feedback from the community to resonate or not with the, the use case uh, and to get all that uh, discussion going and then talk about roadmap. So great. And um, at that meeting too, depending on, on how much time is left, I can also maybe give maybe some insight into that collaboration tool that Darren created and see where the gaps are or continue the conversation some more. Yeah, I think that's where Norman, you know, he's mentioned that that tool. Yeah. So again, um yeah, for their Gates project, um they want an annotation tool that highlights and not only can for the student themselves, but to be able to share comments, maybe yeah. reach out to the instructor through it, that sort of thing. Yes. And um that's... and have discussions about those annotations as well. So yeah, so we'll reveal the, the that list of requirements that we had from the modern languages context. Um, but and, and Mark knows about this because he was involved as well. Mm -hmm. um, and yep. um, and so we'll reveal that information, and then you know, maybe I'm sure there's an overlap and alignment. There also may be distinctions, mm -hmm. and I think we'd like to see if there are distinctions between what's being requested from a funding, you know, from people who pay the bills versus yeah. what, what we're asking for. And is there any tension or conflict? Um, because one thing, um, not saying there is, but um, right. that, that if there, you know, we'd want to know, we'd want to know okay, right. what's on the roadmap, what isn't. And then if we need to fill the gaps, yes. but um, the, the one area is like, um, when you have the, the just the annotation contained to the learn by doing, mm -hmm. you know, there's the page level annotation, yes. and there's the learn by doing, which is the right. focal activity that is a social digital annotation activity. So uh, that's that's the case we're really talking about. And we've got functionality in there where students are collaborating. We're using Canvas. You'll see. Yeah, but, I can't wait. I'm really <laughs> excited about it because so, it's going to inform. Um, because the other thing we're doing is the learning engineering team is also doing some background research on best practices and things like that. And we should probably yeah. pull all this together. Um, I'd love to see and hear about how it's been used so far and lessons yeah. learned. So yeah, I'm yeah. very excited to hear um, next week's. Yeah, next week. and I know there are use cases uh, beyond Sebastian's and Sebastian and Mark both know this. Um, and uh, it's it does take effort in the state of the tool it is in now, mm -hmm. um, though we've reduced some of that. So we'll also want to look at the effort it takes to set up and see what you get from an instructor's perspective. Uh, yes. Right. Definitely. The student can do it because the student's been asked to do it and the you know, class is set yes. up to do it. Yes. But that also is something we we want to be looking at. And, um, and by the way, I'm responsible for developing any professional development around uh, the functionality that we develop for the Gates project in particular. And um, one of the reasons they want the sanitation tool is because the exemplar course is supposed to support, it's an exemplar in um, diversity, equity, and inclusion, mm -hmm. which um, you can only do so much as part of the technology, then the, the professional development and how you use those tools is going to be a big component to that. And so, yeah, I'll definitely want to coordinate yeah, cool. on that. Awesome. Okay, well, I'm gonna call it a meeting. Um, yeah. Thanks everyone for coming. Come to the next one, please. Look forward to speaking with each of you um, about your courses and um, exciting stuff happening this year. So stay tuned. Happy New Year. And Happy, Happy New Year. New Year. Yay. Thank you everyone. Bye. Have Happy a great New Year. weekend. You too.